Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of the Blackbird Grimoire. Welcome to the Daily Forecast for Saturday, October 26, 2024. It is the 5th of Scorpio and it is the Day of Ghosts. In our astrology, the sun is in Scorpio, fixed water, representing resourcefulness. The moon begins the day void, of course, and then at 1047 rather, a.m. Central Time, it moves into fourth quarter Virgo, mutable Earth, which is about being task-oriented. So you're really going to feel a shift of mood right there. Uh, Mercury is in Scorpio, fixed water, representing the spiritual. Venus is in Sagittarius, mutable fire, representing generosity. Mars is in Cancer, cardinal water, representing seeking security. Jupiter, Jupiter is retrograding in Gemini, mutable air, which is to broaden perspective. Saturn is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, which is to redefine dreams. Uranus is retrograding in Taurus, fixed earth, representing rebellion. Neptune is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, which is spiritual awakenings. And Pluto is in Capricorn, cardinal earth, representing reconstruction. Pardon all of my uh, cat maneuverings. Herbie's a little needy today. Now for our retrogrades, Jupiter, it's all about reconnecting with your true path. For Saturn, reclaim your authority. For Uranus, reconsider how you rebel. For Neptune, reclaim your magic. And for Chiron, restore the heroic spirit. Our moon faces the fourth quarter, so it's time to release what does not serve. And then for the Virgo moon, the do's are focus, precision, organization. And the don'ts are job interviews, critical people, and perfectionism. So on this day of Saturn, we have the Virgo moon encouraging us to have a good clearing out, but to do so in an orderly fashion. And this sort of thing is warming the cockles of Saturn's heart because it's also seeking to redefine the way forward during this retrograde period. And it really helps to have a good clearing out uh, because that just feeds into it. Okay, I'm no longer stuck with what was. I, I'm reshaping my environment already. And so now that makes it much easier to envision a different way forward. So don't be afraid to let go. Don't be afraid to uh, get rid of a few things if their time has come because it's all about the process of renewing the energy. In our Halloween tarot, we have the Queen of Imps. Uh, queens represent matriarchs. The suit of Imps is the emotional masculine, projective energy, fire element, and drive. And the key words for this card are the successful Renaissance woman, the woman of many talents and skills, uh, having an appreciation for the world's wonders and kindness and generosity. So lots of good energy. And I hope you'll uh, tap into this in the atmosphere, uh, join it with any organizational pursuits you do today, uh, because it's all working very well together. It's, it's all about uh, bringing more goodness into the world and appreciating the goodness that already exists. Because the queen of Imps, you know, she wants to go out there and do things. She has visions. She has a lot of energy to bring them about. She wants to see the results. And so that's one of the reasons why she's described as a successful Renaissance woman. And with the appreciation of the world wonders, there's so much to see. We have a world full of beauty and symbolism and history and mystery. And there's just so much for us to explore, uh, which is why you're seeing a lot of people uh, turning their attention to these more ancient monuments and saying, okay, what's really going on here? Are we sure when it was built? Are we sure who built it? Look at all of this symbolism. It has things in common with other monuments. These cultures were not in contact. What is going on? What could be the story there? And, and of course, it captures us because if we can come a little closer to solving some of these mysteries, well, it'll, it'll tell us a little bit more about the human story and how we fit into it. Uh, we, it without our past, you, we have a very uncertain present. We have a, a very difficult to form future. Uh, so learning about these things, it really does ground and root us. And with kindness and generosity, uh, that put me in mind of, you know, just because we have a mission doesn't mean we go about it in this very cold and callous way. Uh, the Queen of Imps is representing someone who wants to bring others who, you know, share her interests along for the ride. Let's go out. Let's do the thing. Let's explore the thing. Let's have a good time while we're doing it. Let's make it aesthetically pleasing. All of these things. Uh it is about wanting to share. It's about, you know, wanting to have that buildup of energy with people who also have an appreciation for these things. So definitely tap into this uh, today. See where it takes you. And then uh, for today's Celtic triad, it reads three things in the world between which there's a wonderful difference. The faces of people, the utterances of people, the writings of people. And it reminded me of the old expression of 
you can't judge a book by its cover uh, because what's on the surface, it doesn't tell the whole story, does it? Uh, even though, you know, in fairness to modern writers, I think there's a greater emphasis for marketing purposes mostly uh, to give people a better idea of what's within the story by conveying its essence through the through the cover. So, you know, full credit to them. Uh, but still, and especially when it comes to people, you know, what what we see on the external, it just it isn't the whole thing. And we learn this also through. Uh, when we look at our astrology natal charts, there's so many different energies interacting with one another, some of which uh, we were not consciously aware of before we began looking into it. And so you never know what, what treasures are buried within and, and what might be coming out. And it also reminded me of a quote from uh, the 1995 adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, where Elizabeth Bennett was expressing uh, to Mr. Wickham that getting to know Mr. Darcy better improved her opinion of him. It's not that, you know, what he was on the external had changed or improved in any particular way, but because she knew him better and because she had greater understanding of what made him tick, her opinion of him began to elevate. Beautiful moment in that series. If you've never watched that miniseries, highly recommended. Uh, but it makes the point. Human beings are layered creatures. Our external appearances what we say and how we express ourselves and why these are just pieces, tiny little pieces and fragments of their soul. And none of these things on their own can express the entirety of it on, our, on their own. Uh, nuance really does exist. And I think this is really important to bear in mind because there's so much overwhelming pressure, especially through social media, to turn multidimensional human beings into these one-dimensional caricatures. Uh, you know, and it's it's so dehumanizing. I think that is actively playing the role. And because when people do anything that, uh, you know, perhaps their audience didn't expect or that um, was deemed inconsistent in some way, when really this is just nuance or or someone is just talking out loud of, you know, yes, on the whole, I think this, but these other things are going on in the background and it's it's impacting my thinking and I'm having to wrestle with it. Uh, people can really calm down. On, uh, on public figures for this. And the more prominent the figure, the, the harder people tend to come down. I mean, it's amazing what people feel free to say to one another on social media, it really is. Uh, and it's as though it's saying, you know, you presented this one version of yourself, this one vision, and so anything else like that is lying. And if there's any difference, then you're automatically a grifter and all these other terrible things. And when people take that route, they don't realize you're not taking into account the multi-dimensional and multi-layered reality of what it is to be a human being. And uh, they're not allowing human beings to be human. And they're probably not allowing themselves to be human either. And it's easy to see why this would call, cause unbalance. It's easy to see how that would cause actual mental illness and mental disorders of a variety of kind, because it's, it's out of alignment with the reality of our nature. So I just thought that was uh, something interesting to think about. Then today's magical correspondences are about dignity. For this, the color is indigo. The plant is clove. The animal's the peacock. The crystal's the diopside. And of course, uh, if you're wanting to uh, work on cultivating dignity, you can draw upon these correspondences in a wide variety of ways. And uh, I wanted to bring up the uh, concept of dignity because so many in the modern era just have completely, totally unapologetically rejected dignity as a concept, uh, let alone a practice. And I don't think that has really been uh, to the benefit to anyone as individuals or as the whole. Uh, I think there's a difference between liberty and being a libertine. And for a long while, we've been in a cycle where people have become increasingly libertine. Uh, and the thing of it is, is that it's always on a pendulum. You know, you have periods of history where, you know, the libertine is embraced and then what follows is someone who's a bit more reserved, uh, someone who's a bit more stoic, someone who's a bit more dignified and has a lot more self-control and self-restraint. Uh, so uh, it's up to you whether you choose to reject or or, or embrace uh, the tie that's uh, rejecting dignity, or if you're saying, hey, you know, maybe we could use a little bit of it. Uh, but I think it's important, so important for us to raise awareness that in all probability within our lifetimes, probably within the next few years, uh, we are going to see that pendulum swing away from, you know, the complete unbridled license of people not caring what they do, how they do it, or who saw it, into something where there is a lot more restraint. And the people who don't cultivate some restraint, and I'm talking about healthy self-restraint, nothing 
uh, unduly constrictive. But people who don't choose to do that, uh, they will ultimately be looked down upon uh, because with the return of dignity, you're probably also going to see a return of uh, people being, I don't want to say shamed exactly, but uh, people finding themselves uh, in a position where no one is really seeking out their company and people are not seeking out their company because you know they can't behave themselves. Uh, so I think that's important to bear in mind, especially I really do feel like this shift is, relatively speaking, right around the corner. Might as well uh, plan accordingly. Now for today's practices, it's Saturday, so that's all about topic magic, and I've got two really good uh, um, information sheets on the next slide. And then a uh, contemplation question is this, do you ever feel like a ghost, unseen until you make a ruckus? Uh, because that seems to be what happens. That's an ongoing theme in a lot of these ghost hunting videos and ghost hunting shows. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, spirits hanging around for whatever reason, whether it uh, chooses to or it, or it is being required to in some way. No one pays attention to it. No one even acknowledged. No one is aware of its presence until they start making noise and they start creating problems. And then people are shrieking and freaking out and making. And sometimes I think people do make a bit of a bigger deal about these things and what they actually are, uh, because it may, it may not even necessarily mean that uh, the presence has ill intent or anything else. It, sometimes it's just bored. Sometimes it's just lonely. Sometimes it's just it's, it hasn't been acknowledged for so long. It's striving to have any kind of connection. Pardon my cough. I'm not sick. It's just really high pollen count today, causing problems. Uh, but I think this idea of feeling like a ghost is very relatable for a lot of people. And you can see this because so many people are determined to make an absolute exhibition of themselves doing whatever wild thing happens to pop into their head. And uh, they do it as conspicuously as possible. And I don't think it's really so much about, uh, you know, their identity or people saying, I'm doing this because I think it's fun or, or whatever else. I don't think I don't think what they're saying it is on the surface is actually the issue. I think it's just we live in a very big world. I think we live in a very disconnected world. And a lot of people feel absolutely invisible. And they are trying and they're going to really extreme measures to make themselves visible. Just to hear someone else say that they count, they matter, they exist. They're desperate for acknowledgement. And uh, sometimes people go about in very uh, toxic and inauthentic ways to try to make themselves known. And that's very sad. Uh, and uh, that, oh, and again, a lot of that could have been avoided if we just had a little bit more humanity uh, amongst ourselves. Uh, so that's, uh, I think that's a good thing to meditate upon. And then how can your actions be like Saturn? Where is there a distinct lack of Saturnalian wisdom in society? And it's a spiritual day. Uh, commune with deities you're focusing on this season. I know I wrote community, but I meant commune, flying fingers. What can I say? <clears throat> so here are the final sheets on the Popic magic that I uh, turned up for us on a Pinterest. They are also posted under the community tab on my YouTube channel. And that's where you can really look into the details. And essentially what this does is just it kind of sums up the process of uh, what is involved in, in making the topic, how you can infuse it, uh, how you can activate it, and uh, then essentially what to do with it after that. And of course, also there's a sample spell on the final page. Uh, too much to read out, so I won't be doing that, but it is available uh, under community. And then for our journal prompt, how do you wish to be laid to rest when the time comes? And I know it's a little bit morbid, but it's October and morbid is what we do at this time of year. And it's important to know uh, how you want this to be done, the reasons for it, you know, what expenses are involved. So you, hopefully you can uh, pre-plan and so that uh, it can actually come about and that people won't have to make decisions for you after you're gone. And it's just, you know, the, the day is coming for us all. We're, we're mortal. Our bodies wear out. You know, even if we are, you know, get to live to be 110, you know, at a certain point, Mother Nature says, you're done. And, you know, then uh, the mortal coil is shed. And then we go back into a phase in which we're existing uh, just as a soul, just as the essence of our energy until such time as we are reincarnated. <clears throat> so we do need to think about uh, what to do with our remains leave proper instruction and make sure that things are laid out to where we're comfortable with with how it's going to go. 
And uh, I don't think it's I don't think it uh, is unhealthy to think about these things. If anything, I think it's good to come to a point of acceptance about it of just. It has occurred to everyone else. It will eventually occur to me. I'm not seeking it out. But when the time comes, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be fearful about it. And sometimes having knowing how things are going to go once you're gone, I think that helps take some of the fear out of it. Um, pardon me, wretched pollen. So on that note, and uh, I will be getting some water after this, I wish you all a magical and a delightfully spooky day. Uh, let me know what you think about all of this uh, in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.